If you want to emulate those old classic games that you had as a child, you're going to need two apps first. The first one is a free app called Any Emulator BIOS. Now as you can see right here, it's usually used for PlayStation 1 games because this system requires it from the architecture, but it can come in handy for other systems as well. The second app that you'll need, which is the actual app that you'll be using for emulation, is called RetroArch. Now I love this app because, first of all, it's free. Second of all, it's all-in-one, as in it has a multitude of different systems that you can use to emulate your games. And the third one is that there's absolutely no ads. It's all freeware. Now before you get started playing games, you have to do a couple boring preliminary things first. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to your file manager and create a special folder which you're going to use to store everything that you want to do with emulation. As you can see I'm just using my documents folder here. But this is where you're going to put everything, like all your games and all the BIOS files that you want to use. Now, if you were able to find the Any Emulator BIOS app in the store, which I'm sure you were, now's the time to go into it. And then pick PlayStation 1 BIOS from the top, and then point the app where you want it to create the BIOS file. This is going to be the folder which I told you to create a minute ago. Now you can skip this step entirely if you're not going to be playing PlayStation 1 games, but it's better safe than sorry to have this app on hand. Now after you've done those two things, the next thing you're going to do is go into the RetroArch app that you downloaded. This is what it's going to look like. Then you're going to scroll down to Path Options, and then for ROM Directory at the top, point that to the file that I told you to create, and also Go down here and enable custom directory and then point that to the folder that I told you to create as well. Now after you're done doing that, press the back button and go to settings. And then this is just personal preference but I like to check this auto save state box here because usually sometimes you'll press the back button and this will result in quitting your game and losing your save so this automatically saves the file whenever you quit RetroArch. After you're done doing that, there's really not much more to configure. One thing you can do is go back and go to input options and then customize what your back button does whenever you press it. I usually just leave it at quit, but you can move it to menu toggle if you want. That's up to you. But after that, you're done and you're ready to get some ROMs and start playing. If you didn't know already, ROM stands for read-only memory, and it's what games are stored on electronically. These files are what you're going to be using to play the games that you want. All you have to do is find them on the internet, and it shouldn't be too hard. Now I can't really tell you exactly where to get ROMs, but one thing I can say is that ROMs that are cool can be found very easily in the search engine. Now when you're downloading a ROM, Usually you're supposed to own a copy physically or digitally or else it's not looked upon very nicely, I guess you could put it. Now when you download a ROM, it usually will come as a zip file. Just unzip that on your phone or your computer and then put the files that you unzipped into the folder that you created a little while ago. This is what ROMs usually look like when they're unzipped. Like Nintendo DS games will have a .NDS ending, and SNES games will usually end in SMC. Also, PlayStation games, they come with two files that you'll need, .bin and .q. You're going to want to keep both of these, because they're both important for playing PS games. Now once you've got your game, you've got it downloaded, and you put it into that folder, and you've got everything else set up, Now's the time to start playing. Go to load game, and from here you're going to see every different system that's available to play on. I'm going to choose Nintendo SNES, which will be right here, SNES 9 next. And then all you do is pick the file, and just find which one's appropriate for it, so there it is. And then as you can see it comes on, it's starting to load, and there it is. Now that little overlay that you saw is the d-pad and the buttons and everything. You don't have to use those, 
you can set up a controller which I'm going to show you in a little bit but just so you know that those on-screen controls are usually only used for like simple games from SNES or NES games they won't function very well if you want to use them for PlayStation now here's the app in action as you can see it looks exactly like a Super Nintendo overlay the sounds working pretty good and the controls are pretty responsive there's no issues I think that this app was perfect for Super Nintendo Entertainment System emulation you can go here and this is where you load your states, this is where you save states, but I usually just press back and leave and then when I come back it's working perfectly fine. These two are shaders. I think those change the, the look of the game, but I don't touch those. And then these states, minus and plus, are cycling through the states of your saving in case you save like every minute. Now these two I don't use really, but they're useful for some games, like hard games you can rewind before you die or fast forward boring parts I guess and then the slow-mo same reason it puts things into slow motion and then this reset is like a typical reset button on a, a Super Nintendo it just resets the game over see and then to get your controls back you just press that bottom arrow this button does similar things. It's like the options in the uh, black UI. You don't really need to touch this. Other than that, as you can see, it's working pretty good. Just press back to leave. And then when I load it again from my history, see it's right back to the option that I just left at. That's why I like that back button option. Now I don't recommend playing PlayStation games on your phone, but it's better to use a tablet, but if you want to, some games do work, like I have on Metal Gear Solid here, and it works pretty good on the phone, there's really no noticeable issues. To use a controller, I recommend uh, using a DualShock, and you're going to need the controller, and then you're going to need a OTG USB cable, as you can see here. This is going to be used to connect to the phone or to the tablet. And then you're going to need the controller's USB cable right here. As you can see here, I got the game running um, using my PlayStation controller. And I can move them around like this and do everything you need to do. It's exactly like you were playing it on the PlayStation. Now, sometimes when you connect the controller, it won't, like the buttons won't either, they won't work or they'll be the wrong setting. If that happens, just go back and then go to input options and then go to, yeah, disable this, uh, yeah, it pre-configures the game pads that you connect, so disable this and then scroll all the way down to player one custom binds. And then from here you can customize however you want the controller to react. So if I want to customize the up button, just get rid of this keyboard and then press detect here and then press the up button on your controller and then it'll detect it and then you press OK and you're good to go. Just do that for every single setting there and then eventually you'll have the gamepad configured to however you want it. Here I'm going to show you how it works on my phone. Just go to your history and then I load this up. And when I connected the controller to my phone it worked immediately. Everything was in place and it detected my PlayStation controller. I didn't have to disable the auto detection so it's up to you however it works out for you I'm using a Galaxy S3 so maybe that's why as you can see it's running perfectly fine here if you wanna do wireless connection you're gonna have to buy an app I think it's called 6-axis controller but it's only two dollars and fifty cents and it works pretty good I don't think you can do um, wireless without it so that's the only time you'll have to spend money if you want to play a wireless if you want to play a PlayStation game wirelessly but some PlayStation games work perfectly fine on the phone and some don't if they don't work well you're gonna to have to either use a tablet or emulate it on your computer but here it's working just fine so it's up to you whichever game you choose 
Now before I end the video, I just want to mention that some systems won't work well on any Android based device like if I go to there's an option here for Nintendo DS emulation and in my opinion it's not worth using this app for. This app is amazing except for a few things like that. If you want to emulate DS games there's certain apps in the app store that are better used for this but in general this is a very good app for emulation of simple games like Super Nintendo or PlayStation 1. But other than that, I think that's about it. I'm pretty sure I've shown you everything. But if I haven't, just be sure to uh, check out this help section. This is a frequently asked questions, and it helped me a lot when I was first setting up. Or you can go to about, and there's a few PDF guides here which give you everything you need to know almost. If not, just post a comment under the video and I'll do my best to answer it. But other than that, thanks for watching, please do subscribe if you like my videos, and I'll see you in the next one.